One fundamental question in urban economics or any urban theory is why are there cities? In the US, more than 80% of the population live in urban areas, whereas these urban areas only account for 3% of the land. So there must be benefits for people to, to get together, but then what are they? On the other hand, uh, people in the US or people in any country, they actually don't actually get together in only one place. They actually spread out in some sense. I mean, there are many, many, many different cities. And so they, that just means that cities have their, their limits. And so there must be some costs that prevent cities from growing indefinitely. So the key question that fascinates me is how do the balances of the costs and benefits of cities drive the city size differences that we observe, for example, in the US or in, in any other countries? So there's actually a robust and stable pattern about the city size differences across time and across countries. And this is actually called the power law. We can actually rank all the cities in, in terms of their size. For example, in the US, number one will be given to the largest city, which is New York, and number two will be given to LA, and number three will be given to Chicago, so on and so forth. One particular uh, case of power law is that when you take the rank and the size of a city and you multiply them, you get a constant. So basically, that just implies that the second largest city would be half of the size of, of the largest one, and the third largest city would be one third of the size of the largest one, so on and so forth. People are interested in this because this kind of pattern is quite robust across time and country, and that's why um, it, it fascinates people and just want to provide uh, explanation to it. My explanation to it is to use the so-called central place theory so basically, central player theory has two key elements. One says that the larger cities provide all the goods that are provided by the smaller ones, but they provide more. So there's a set of goods that are provided exclusively by the larger cities. This kind of goods are goods that you need a lot of people to, to sell to. For example, these are like stock exchange. And, and so because of that, we need a large market area. And because of this, uh, the, the locations of such products and services cannot be too, too many. The other key element is the spacing pattern. So the spacing pattern here is something like the smaller cities is actually in the middle between two larger ones, and then you go down one layer further down, then you have smaller cities in between two, two neighboring larger ones, so on and so forth. And this kind of structure uh, sort of resembles the Russian dome in the sense that you actually have a smaller piece of the city hierarchy inside the bigger ones, and you can go further down that you have smaller piece of city hierarchy inside the bigger ones, and this actually pr produce something that we call the fractal structure, which is actually the basis to give the power law. If you look at the satellite image of the U.S. at night, it's actually quite a vivid visualization of the cities on space because typically when you have a larger city, you, uh, there are more lights. This is LA and that is New York. It's actually the two largest cities in the US. The third largest one is Chicago, which is roughly in the middle. Well, you might say not quite, but think about the, there's a big Rocky Mountains here. If you erase them, it's roughly in the middle. The central place spacing patterns is actually more pronounced in the in the Midwest. So basically, in a two-dimensional space, the spacing pattern is that the, the next layer city is in the middle of the triangle of the three neighboring larger size cities. So basically, the three largest one in the Midwest is actually Chicago and Dallas and Atlanta. Now, in this triangle, the largest one is actually St. Louis. It's kind of in the middle, kind of. And then, if you look at the triangle formed by uh, St. Louis, Dallas, and Atlanta, then you see this Memphis, which is actually right in the middle. Okay, now you can go further down and then look at triangle formed by Memphis, Atlanta, and New Orleans. You actually find a city which is here, which is sort of in the middle, which is Birmingham. So of course, there are many other factors such as international trade, seaports, or landscape, but you still, on this map, you can clearly see this pattern. The thing is that, in terms of theory, it's actually quite loose and inconsistent. So what I do in my paper is actually to describe in what conditions central place hierarchy can, can arise from an economic model. Mm -hmm.